Well, I'd like to say welcome to the Whitliffe Collections at Texas State University, and thank you for coming today. My name is Beverly Fondren, and I'm the development officer for the collection, standing in for our interim director, Steve Davis, who could not be with us today. Um, we've planned two very important and timely panels on cultural and political populism with an exceptional lineup of panelists and musicians, all recruited by our guest of honor, Jim Hightower, and his staff. Let me first and foremost publicly thank, on behalf of the collections and the university, Jim Hightower for the tremendous gift of his archive. We couldn't imagine a more fitting addition to the collections. The archive is open for research after one year. Uh, it's open, we expect many, many students and scholars and the general public to come here to conduct research on Jim's life's work as a populist journalist, historian, and advocate. Fred Harris, former U.S. Senator from Oklahoma and one of our panelists today, will provide a much more thorough and engaging introduction of Jim a bit later in the day. I'm going to keep my comments brief so that we can keep moving forward. I would, li I would like to acknowledge a few people uh, whose hard work and wonderful contributions have gone into making this event. I know Jim will make some of the same acknowledgments later today, but you can never thank people enough. Two very important people whose ongoing support we could not do without. One is Bill Whitliffe, the founding donor of these collections. And Bill it will be here a little bit later today, but I always have to mention Bill's name because we wouldn't be here without him. The other is Joan Heath, who's the Assistant Vice President for the University Library, whose support is very important to us at the collections. Thank you, Joan. And I would like to pass along our sincere gratitude to Melody Bird and Laura Ehrlich from Hightower's office, who have been wonderful to work with and I know have put in very long hours to bring everyone together today. A big thank you to all the Whitliffe Collection staff who are running around. And if you ever have any questions today, please feel free to find someone with a Whitliffe name tag and ask them. I would like to say I want to especially thank Amy Cochran, who's our events coordinator, uh, whose attention to detail and extraordinary organizational skills uh, we could not do without either. I also want to thank Suzanne Perkins, the owner of Cool Mint Cafe in San Marcos, for providing the wonderfully locally grown food and, and wine that we're going to enjoy today. Suzanne and Cool Mint is a very generous supporter of the collections, and we will have some refreshments during the break between panels as well as the, uh, uh, the afternoon reception uh, beginning later today. I also want to thank St. Arnold's Brewery for the beer, uh, Texas Specialty Cut Flowers from the Arnosky Family Farm for their flower arrangements, I also want to thank Steve Davis, who again is not here today, uh, for the wonderful exhibition that he curated of Jim Hightower's materials. I also want to say thank you to Mary Garcia, our assistant archivist, and Bianca Marshall, a student worker who spent the better part of a full year uh, inventorying and preserving uh, the Hightower archives so that it could be open for research and not sitting in boxes for years and years and years. And last but not least, the former director of the Whitliffe Collections, Connie Todd. Uh, who ably led the collections for 12 and a half years and was here when the discussions first began um, with Jim about his archive. Uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping items uh, I'd like to mention. One is please turn off your cell phones. They do interfere sometimes with the microphones and the sound, and we obviously have been having a few problems today. Uh, and then, again, take time during the break and uh, the reception this afternoon to view the exhibits. Um, of course, importantly, the High Tower exhibit, but also the Viva Mexico exhibit that we have in here, and then in the other galleries is Vicaro, and these are photographs by Bill Whitliffe that he took back in the early 70s that are really wonderful. And then lastly, just please enjoy yourselves today. And now to introduce our first panel, Populism in Texas Politics, please join me in welcoming Jim Hightower. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Beverly, and this wonderful uh, Whitliffe uh, staff, they have just been fabulous uh, to work with, the most professional uh, bunch of people. Uh, it just intimidated us uh, so much. We were not used to that sort of efficiency. Uh, but uh, we're gathered here uh, to talk about the living spirit of uh, Texas uh, populism uh, and making the point that this is not just something that happened uh, back in 1877 uh, when populism sprang out of Lampasas uh, County. Uh, or not something that just goes back to the 1892 People's Party or the 1896 William Jennings Bryan election, but rather something that is vibrant across our state and across our country uh, uh, today. And it also, I believe, is vital 
to the progressive future uh, of, the, uh, of the United States. And we're not going to dwell on the history uh, of populism. Y'all have been handed one of these as you came in. This is my Hightower Lowdown. Uh, we've got copies of it out there. This is from last May when we went into the history of populism a bit uh, because the media had taken to calling uh, Sarah Palin and uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh and that, those people populists. So we thought we might uh, lay out what populism really is and whether they measure uh, up to it. Uh, we call this the living spirit of Texas populism because it's, it's the spirit that matters. Not very few people actually call themselves populists, yet they are. Uh, and that's what we want to talk about today. And again, unlike the, uh, the faux populists uh, on the right wing, uh, we believe that the real political spectrum is not right to left. Uh, that's theory. Uh, that actually divides us. Rather, the true political spectrum in America is top to bottom. Uh, that's experience. That's where people actually live. Uh, and we, I find that about 80% of the American people don't find themselves even in shouting distance of those powers at the top, no matter what the powers call them. So that's what we're here to talk about today, is top uh, to bottom. Um, my role here is to introduce the panel, and then we're going to turn them uh, loose. I'll start with my old pal uh, Fred Harris, uh, Fred R. Harris. Uh, he was red uh, long before Oklahoma became the reddest state uh, of all. <laughs> Uh, and he was not red because he was at all uh, Republican. Uh, he was a hardcore populist striving uh, Democrat uh, as state senator and then becoming U.S. senator. But he was red because uh, he took on the corporate giants, so the lobbyists and the Republican opposition started calling him Fred Red Harris. Uh, well, you know, Woody Guthrie once said, uh, I'm not a communist, but I have been in the red all my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, many of us have experienced uh, that. Uh, well, I've known, admired, and enjoyed uh, Fred Harris uh, uh, for 40-something years, uh, back when he was U.S. Senator. Uh, then uh, then I, uh, I was his campaign coordinator in 76 when he ran for president. Uh, I made Fred what he is today, a <laughs> professor in Albuquerque. Uh, but, uh, He's author of a book called The New Populism uh, back in the 1970s that really kind of set it out in modern terms. Uh, author of countless books, uh, including three novels. Great speaker, uh, just a fabulous storyteller, and all around a human being. Fred, we welcome you to uh, uh, sunny San Marcos, Texas. Then we're going to, I'm going to run on down the, the list here. Uh, Linda Chavez Thompson. Uh, this is one powerhouse uh, of a woman. Uh, she doesn't have to study about working family issues because she has lived them. Uh, dropped out of school in the ninth grade, uh, had to work full time in order to help her family uh, just put three squares a day on the table. Got into the union movement uh, out on the South Plains of, of our state, rose all the way to become the executive vice president of the national AFL-CIO. Uh, I first met her in 78, uh, 79 when I kicked off my uh, politicking period, running for railroad commission, and she and her husband were just fabulous organizers. By then, they were living in San Antonio. I lost statewide, but Linda organized and mobilized, uh, kicked butt, and took names, and gave me a sweeping victory uh, in San Antonio. Uh, <laughs> today's, uh, today's event is, of course, and I stress this, strictly a nonpartisan uh, academic uh, forum. So. <laughs> So I will not mention that Linda Chavez Thompson is presently the Democratic Party's proud nominee to be Lieutenant Governor of the state of Texas. <laughs> then we've got, uh, got uh, Jim Cullen, uh, a Texas guy with a national voice. Jim is editor of the Progressive Populist, and there are copies of it out there as well, uh, which comes uh, out of Iowa, though Jim is based uh, here in uh, Central Texas. Uh, I first met Jim when he was a, uh, a, a did a stint as editor of the Texas Observer, and I'm proud to say that my little newspaper columns uh, run every month uh, in this red-hot uh, populist paper that uh, he and his brothers put out. Uh, the Progressive Populist, which, by the way, is owned uh, by its employees, uh, reports from America's heartland serving as, quote, the people's voice in a corporate world. We need a little more of that. And finally, uh, to be our moderator and commentator, our, our final panelist uh, uh, of this uh, blue ribbon bunch that we have here is, uh, is uh, Bob Moser. Uh, the Texas Observer, of course, is the little paper uh, that does uh, in the state of Texas. There's a, 
motel called the Austin Motel near where I live uh, in south side of Austin. They used to have a marquee there that said, no additives, no preservatives, corporate free since 1938. <laughs> well, the observer goes back corporate free from its beginning in 1954. Uh, 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 fiercely independent, uh, free wheeling, uh, muckrakers, seriously underpaid editors uh, over the years. I've been one of those. Uh, Ronnie Duggar was the first one, Molly Ivins, of course, and now Bob. Uh, Bob Moser hails from a North Carolina blue-collar family. Uh, he's been an award-winning uh, journalist, investigative reporter with Nation Magazine, author of a book called Blue Dixie, uh, which has a fabulous theme. We can get into that a little bit. Uh, now bringing a revitalized populist punch uh, to the Texas Observer, uh, Bob Moser. Bob, take it away. <laughs> 